Welcome back to the channel guys. You're here at Laser Everything and today we're doing some glass work on the UV. Buckle up because we're getting started right now. Now this was a project that I did previously. It was a gift for some family members and for demonstration purposes I have this glass here. This is your typical pint glass. It's got a nice tapered edge to it. It's 62 millimeters down here at the bottom and it's 90 up here. So that's like the difference of just over an inch in diameter from top to bottom, which gives us a pretty hefty taper. So what we need to account for when we're engraving this is we need to level this out so that the bottom is on the same plane as the top of the glass for the engraved surface. Because if we don't do that, it's going to cause uneven marking and ablation as we go in and out of focus. Now we do cover this topic in a prior video that we did for troubleshooting purposes. It was essentially called why your engravings are coming out uneven. And the cause of that is when you're going in and out of focus, you have this range of workable area given your wavelength and your lens size and your focal distance that allow you to be able to mark and give you a range of workable zone that will still mark exceptionally well, or at least good enough to give you even results across that range. Now, this is exactly the same concept and reason why you wanna level this out, because in this case, a UV laser is going to have a very short focal range, and it's going to cause issues if too much tilt is involved and you're going out of focus on one side of your engrave, and then the center of your engrave is in focus, and then the top part of your engrave is also out of focus. So I'll leave a link to that video if you wanna reference that. I'm gonna account for that by basically raising one side of my rotary. If you have something like a pie burn or a roto boss or something that can adjust one side of your glassware or your cup or whatever you're engraving, that's going to help a lot because it's going to help fix the focal distance issue you're going to get. And on a UV, that means a lot because on a UV, you don't have a lot of focal distance to play with because it's such a small wavelength beam. You don't get the same stretch that you do with like a CO2 or a fiber. So you really need to work with what you have and try and keep everything as focused as possible. So let's go ahead over and I'm gonna show you how I jig this up, just like I jigged up the wine glasses. All right, so here we are in Lightburn and we're looking at our initial design here for the top of the glass. And this is essentially going on as per usual. We need to enable rotary mode. And with that, if you haven't set up your rotary before you do any wine glasses or anything like that, I would go into laser tools and do your rotary setup, make sure that is 100%. Now for my split size, I generally for the UV do 0.04 for split. 0.01 overlap, or I'll do zero overlap, 0.04 split. And a lot of that has to do with the settings that I run on my UV. And because I haven't really tuned in the timings on this, I'm running unidirectional to avoid inflaming any particular issues with my timing and causing that to show in the final result. This helps minimize that. If you have your timings tuned in, I definitely recommend doing bidirectional, help save a little bit of time. And you'll see with the UV here, it says power 99. Completely skip over that because power is not a factor when you're looking at UV parameters. It's all about speed, frequency, pulse width, your line interval, how many passes you're doing. Essentially what you would expect on a fiber and a CO2 where you have power mixed in, that's not the case. But I run 400 speed, 40 frequency, and one Q pulse, and this is on a five watt JPT UV laser. Now that is going to change, especially if your source and model change. So this settings, more specifically, if you're using as a starting point, I would suggest only if you have a five watt JPT UV. 0.04 line interval, like I said, and if you do have your timings tuned in, bi-directional is perfectly fine. I'm running without it just to maximize quality and not risk the final product here. Now, moving on, we're gonna go ahead and run this on the UV. Again, in rotary mode, we're gonna make sure it's sized up to what we need. So if you're following along at home and you're doing something similar, make sure you size it up to the glass that you're using. All right, moving on. For the sake of demonstration purposes, we're just gonna use this very basic setup, but essentially we have our glass here and we have a plate and we have our little cup end, our cone. And what we wanna do is we wanna get this into a position where we can pinch it together. Now this is 
made to be a quick swap wine tumbler rotary. A lot of laser manufacturers carry this, super basic. I should realistically be using the flat one of these, but that's okay. And you'll notice that we have a lot more room at the bottom of this cup on the cone than we do at the top, which tells me this isn't lined up. All right, so we can turn. It's not moving around a whole lot. It's good enough. So essentially for demonstration purposes, again, we want to go ahead and identify the fact that there is a large taper here. So with the laser, you want to have a flat as surface as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a couple of these and we're gonna just raise up the whole backside of the rotary here. And you'll notice while the backside is still a little bit low, it mostly leveled out this side of the rotary. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to operate the Galvo, in this case, the UV, and as close to focus as possible across the entire surface that we're engraving. So we're gonna get a much more consistent engrave and a much more consistent mark across the entire surface. If you've done a lot of project mark or cylinder correct engraving, where you're engraving across the entire cylinder, or entire cup. This is what you're fighting. It's very difficult to do that with a UV without having a 3D laser. And a lot of people just aren't into that with the added complication of that. And that's totally understandable. But this is how I fight having a high spot and a low spot on a cup is get it as close to even as possible. And what I can do now is I can just throw a couple of bolts through here. It's gonna be pinching on the high side where I'm raising it up, but I can slide this whole thing to the point where it's bumping up against these ends and that will reduce the amount of play. You could even tape this thing down. And then what you do is you just pull this out and you swap your cup and you make every effort to not move the rotary in between when you're doing a series of mugs and cups. So that's it for the tips for now. We're gonna go ahead and dive into me engraving these wine glasses. So next up, you're going to see the bottom part of the glass getting engraved. And the reason why we want to do that a little bit special is so that as the glass is being used, or even as a display piece, looking down at the glass or through the glass, you can see the names or a message or whatever you want to put on the bottom of the glass there through the glass. But what's nice about it is it's engraved on the bottom of the glass. So it's going to remain untouched. You can't feel it. It's just going to give a nice, clean, frosty pop through the glass. So let's dive in on how to do that next. All right, so now that we're done with engraving the main bodies, the upper portion of our wine glasses with this design here, and we're gonna do those, or at least I'm going to do those all at the same time. And the reason being is then we don't have to worry about moving the rotary back and forth, resetting up for the same glasses over and over and over. And also it reduces our chances of screwing something up during the setup process. We're removing chance for human error by doing the same thing. And now that they're all done, move that off to the side and I've prepared this design here. Now, these are just the names of who is essentially gifting this wine glass. So it's a from message, we'll say. And I'm gonna show you how I recreate that because that's not exactly something we've covered, I don't think, on the channel. And I think that's something that can be helpful. So in generating a circle, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift. Shift being the important factor there because it's keeping the circle perfectly symmetrical or perfectly round. And Control allows you to designate your starting point. So if you're in the center of the circle like this and you generate a circle and you hold control, it's going to form outward instead of from the starting point down or whichever direction you're dragging it. And so I now have two circles. I have an outside circle, which I'm going to pretend is our outside dimension of bottom of our glass. And I have an inner circle here, and I'm using that as a spacing line for the center of our text. Now there's two ways we can do this. I can just generate some text and I'll just say test. 
And I'll put that on the black layer so we can see it a little bit easier. And what we can do is we can align it and highlight both our center line and the text. And we're going to tools and apply path to text. Now, as you can see, it's now rotating not from center. So we're gonna undo that. We're gonna select just the circle and rotate it. And it says test. Now, this would be great if we're engraving it from the top down and we wanna see it from the top. However, we're engraving it from the bottom. So this isn't gonna work. If we engrave this from the bottom, it's going to appear inverted. So what I'm going to do is undo that and I'm going to mirror this text. There may be an easier way to do this in Illustrator or something else. However, when you invert this and apply it as we just did, it does unfortunately at this point anyway, apply the text not mirrored anymore. So I have to do this manually if I wanna use Lightburn for this design which is okay with me. So I can center it up on this line. I can even use this blue circle here to form a little bit of a curve if I wanted to. In this case, this font doesn't really work that great with horizontal bending or curving, I should say. So what I can do is I can generate my words. If they're longer words and they're strung together, this may appear a little bit nicer. And you just form your text manually around the circle like that, and that's fine. And you can move on from there. And the only reason why we have to do this workaround is because we're engraving from the bottom. We want it to be read from the top. So therefore it has to be mirrored. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move our little demonstration piece out of here. We're gonna center up the piece that I did prepare already. Again, I'm using the outer line to align this to the bottom of the glass. And I'm using the inner line for the actual alignment of our text. So we have everything consistent from the outer edge and therefore it looks beautiful. Don't forget to check your focus from the lens to your piece as well. And that's it. So let's go ahead and get that all sorted. Now you will see that I'm going for a second pass on the bottoms of these glasses and it's not something I did when engraving the top portion of the glass. The reason why is because the bottom portion of this glass is much thicker and heftier than the top portion. In this case, that's part of the nature of it being handmade is it's not going to be as consistent as something that's machine made. It is crystal and it is, you know, a really nice product, but that's something to keep in mind is you're gonna have to play that kind of thing by ear based on the glass that's in your hand. Is it something that you can achieve even from glasses within the same set. So just a pointer there as well as I didn't do that on the top portion of the glass because it is a little bit thinner at the top in these glasses case. So I knew that was going to be something I didn't want to do. I didn't want to compromise the integrity of the glass and risk it breaking. However, on the bottom where it is a lot thicker, I felt a lot more comfortable doing so. Therefore, it gave the base a little bit more of a pop. So yeah, enjoy guys. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of UV content doing these crystal wine glasses. If you enjoyed this content, please consider supporting us through the Laser Master Academy, the LMA as we call it. And the LMA subscribers are how we can afford to do what we do as a team, making educational content, supporting the community, and making tools to help everyone out. So if you're interested or wanna help us do what we do, please consider checking that out. Link will be in the description as well as the links to the rest of our communities as well, Discord and Facebook. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.